Welcome to the video on ICH Q1 guideline update. As we know, the ICH provides guideline on the different aspects. And recently, there is an update on Q1 guideline. Earlier, the guideline was Q1 R2 versus this new coming guideline is Q1 R3. So let's start with the video to learn the updation ICH Q1 guideline update the purpose of this update is to modernize and integrate the ICH Q1A guideline earlier we know that Q1A to Q1F guidelines were there now it is a single and harmonized guideline for stability testing of the drug substances and the drug products let's see what are the major updates in this ICH Q1 draft guideline so novel excipients and adjuvants are included now these uh, novel excipients and adjuvants are addressed due to their critical role in the stability and quality earlier uh, there was no information about this now section 13 is for data evaluation and it provides a new structured format with emphasis on the statistical analysis of the stability data section 14 is there for labeling and storage with updated recommendations for storage statements based on study outcomes. Section 15, Stability Lifecycle Management. It provides you the information regarding aligning the stability strategy with the product lifecycle and QBD principles, that is, quality by design principles. New annexures are there, annexure 1, 2, 3. Annexure 1 is for bracketing and matrixing. So earlier it was from Q1D. Annex 2 stability modeling. It is expanded from earlier Q1E. Annex 3 stability guidance for MT MPs for the advanced therapies. Additional key features of these draft guidelines are short term and in use stability studies. Recognized as essential, especially for biologics and reconstituted products. Then holding time guidance is included for stability of intermediates and bulk before packaging now it is included reference standards clearer expectations for stability of working reference materials now see the differences between these two guidelines we are using presently the ICH Q1 R2 and now we got the update as a draft guideline ICHQ1 R3. This is a comparative overview of these two. Status of Q1 R2 is it is a finalized guideline based on Q1A to Q1A. Q1 R3 is a draft guideline structure. Multiple separate guidelines are there for Q1 R2. And now the draft guideline includes one unified guideline integrating Q1A to Q1A. Scope focused on the drug substance and the products mainly chemical entities and now the drug guideline includes broader scope including the biologicals aligned with the Q5C MTMPs and novel excipients. Photostability was addressed separately in ICHQ1B and now it is integrated directly into the unified guideline. Risk based approach was traditional data collection and interpretation earlier. Now it emphasizes science and risk based strategies for study design and the data interpretation. Holding time and in use uh, stability was uh, not mentioned or limited mention was there earlier. Now clearer guidance on holding time of intermediate and in use stability post opening of the containers is included. Modeling and statistical approaches where basic data evaluation limited modeling was there earlier. And now it has uh, enhanced modeling data extrapolation techniques and shelf life prediction tools in the updated one. So annexures not systematically included earlier. Now three annexures are there for practical applications, bracketing, matrixing and modeling. ATM is information is included. ICHQ1 R2 does not specifically cover the novel excipients, but the draft guideline address the stability testing of novel excipients and reference materials. Presentation of data earlier was descriptive table based summaries. Now it recommends standardized harmonized data presentations. 
earlier flexibility was limited for the protocol design and now in the draft guideline it encourages flexible fit for purpose stability strategies alignment with the other ics guidelines so partial overlap with q5c and q1e now it is fully harmonized with the q5c for biologicals and q1e for the evaluation then the ich q1 r3 is a transformational guideline aiming to modernize and simplify the global stability guidelines it reflects a life cycle and a risk based approach for the stability studies it is enabling greater flexibility and relevance to novel therapies and complex formulations and dose forms the move from multiple documents like q1a to q1f to a single guideline ensures consistency and clarity practical implications for this updated guideline is for the industry professionals and it has impact on two different departments and different aspects so regulatory affairs need to revise stability protocols as per r3 unified principles formulation r and d uh, has to provide flexibility to design tailored risk based stability studies quality assurance enhanced tool for predictive shelf life assignments biologicals and atmps developers for better clarity and inclusion of the stability guidance this is the updated information on the ICH Q1 guideline earlier it was Q1 R2 now it is R3 so earlier different sections were there Q1A to Q1F and now it is a single guideline this is a draft guideline presently and as a pharma professional we should be very much well known to the updates on the guidelines and ICH is one of them i hope this video will help you to understand clearly what are the updates on ICH Q1 guideline Thank you for watching the video.